there are no two ways about it. Losing your job is tough. So whether you've lost your job as a result of a layoff, you've quit, you've been part of a reorganization, it's hard and you're probably going through lots of different emotions. And with that, it's easy to get overwhelmed, but hard to know what you should actually be doing to move forward. Hi, I'm Shauna. Welcome to Career Interrupted. If you've recently gone through job loss, be sure to stick around and I'm going to tell you why it's really, really important to not go on the rebound. You know what happens in our personal lives when we go on the rebound. Rebounding can mean that we make rash choices that maybe aren't the best decisions over the long term. Can be a hard thing to overcome when you're kind of panicking because you've lost your job, your primary source of income. Likely you're saying like, I've got to get the next one lined up right away. But what if you were intentional about it? What if instead of going on the rebound, you use this time as an opportunity to really focus in on what you want to get out of your career and your life? I recently worked with this client, let's call her Jennifer, and she lost her job. And as soon as she lost her job, she went out and started interviewing, um, ended up getting another job really quickly. She had a lot of great skills as a senior finance professional. Now, what ended up happening was she hated the job, ended up falling into sort of this year long depression because she hadn't really grieved um, the relationship with her previous employer, which was a really long-term relationship for her. She had been with the same company for over 18 years. So by the time she came to me, she was feeling completely lost, overwhelmed, and like she made a mistake by accepting this new position really, really quickly. If we take job loss and look at it in sort of a bigger picture and look at it as a life setback, we can learn from that. And when we start to look at the bigger picture and look at job loss as, as a setback, we know that how we respond to that setback is really, really gonna say um, a lot about us and our future. And how we respond to that setback could also be a really great way to demonstrate leadership skills and ability to overcome adversity as we move into the next phase of our careers. Okay, so you've got things straightened out with your employer, you've moved past those feelings of initial shock. Now, what the... I'm gonna walk you through five practical things that you should do in the weeks following job loss. Focus on the future. So the first thing you've got to do is really get out of like that coulda, shoulda, woulda mindset, thinking about like, why me, why now, why not my coworker? You know what I'm talking about, that like little trail you can go down pretty easily. Um, instead of focusing on what coulda, shoulda, woulda happened, why not shift your focus to the future and all of those possibilities. Now is a great time to sort of take stock of your professional career, set clear goals, set a specific career target. Think about how you're gonna manage your budget through this time of transition. So change the mindset from focusing on what coulda, shoulda, woulda been when it comes to your career at that company and focus on what's next and how you're gonna get that. If you're finding this video helpful, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. Remember, your job does not define you. It never did, it never was. And I cannot stress this enough, having been in those conversations behind closed doors, so much of the time there are decisions and politics and People have these agendas they're, they're looking to self-fulfill um, and that can end up impacting you in your professional career. So what you need to know is, is that it's not personal. So, so yes, job loss is an extremely personal experience, but you going through that process of being terminated or being laid off or whatever, it's not a reflection of who you are 
and your values. So please remember your job does not define you. You define you, your values define you. And often when it comes to job loss, so many of the circumstances surrounding that are really, really far beyond our scope of control. So once you can start to walk away from needing those answers, why me? Why now? You're going to be in a much better situation to look towards the future. So stop asking why me? Why now? Because you're probably never going to know. You are probably never going to know all the answers. Your job doesn't define you. Not now, not later, not ever. You define who you are. Prioritize self-care. It is super easy to Netflix and chill through this transition or Netflix and wine. No judgment. Um, but it's so important that you put yourself and your well-being on the priority list now and create a schedule and some sort of routine around self-care. So reflect on what it is, um, what is it, what is it that that means for you? Is it going for a daily walk? Is it reading? Um, focus on what makes you feel like you, like re what recharges your batteries? What activities do you do that makes you feel, that make you feel rather really, really good and happy? Put those activities on your priority list because you've got to take care of you in order to become the best you on the other side of this big transition. Make your network. Now's the time to start reaching out to that contact list of yours. Start leveraging LinkedIn. But wait, before you do it, I want you to make sure you have a really clear idea of what you want. That's why step one is so, so important. Focusing on the future, creating a plan, setting clear career goals. Don't dive into this reaching out to your network without knowing what you want to get from your network. So before you start reaching out to folks, I think it's really, really important that you can articulate a couple of key things. One being what you need help with and two being how this contact can actually help you. It's a lot more effective to send a specific request to someone asking them for help with a specific thing rather than to say like, hey, I'm Shauna and I need a job. That makes it really, really hard for the contact in your network to engage and help you because they just plain don't know what you want them to do. So make sure you tell them. Treat finding a job like a job. Create structure in your day. <laughs> I know around Netflix and chill, um, but create structure in your day. Create a schedule for your day. There are lots of steps and tactics involved in job searching. You're gonna have a lot to do from resumes to cover letters to LinkedIn to following up with contacts to looking at job boards to self-care. It's a lot. You can make finding a job a full-time job. And I really think that once you have some structure around your day, you're gonna start to feel better about yourself and better about the situation. Because as soon as you start to create that structure, it becomes a lot more clear that you're working towards some specific goals. So, what's your job search schedule? Let me know in the comments. Nine to noon, Netflix and chill. I am so sorry if you've lost your job. I've been through it myself and I've worked through hundreds of transitions with clients and it stings, it's emotional, no matter what the circumstance. So many folks right now are getting great severance packages, they're getting paid for a year, maybe two years. And still, still with that, it's perfectly normal to be feeling stress and anxiety over the future. If you're getting a severance package like that, you've probably been with the company for a lot of years 
this might be the biggest breakup that you've had in your life. So be assured it's going to pass. It's going to pass, but only once you start to take control and ownership of the situation by taking the steps to move forward and focus in on your future. Jennifer ended up taking that job, a financial position that she was not feeling. She stayed in that role for about six months and ultimately ended up quitting because it, it wasn't for her. It wasn't what she wanted. She found it on the rebound. Job loss forced her to reflect on her own values and what she wanted in life, like what she really, really wanted. So she ended up quitting that job and then actually moving out on her own and starting a small business that was more in alignment with things that she believed in, the schedule she wanted to work, and the life that she wanted to live. And this is a story that I hear time and time again. Job loss sucks, it stings and it's emotional, but it also forces us into this state of reflection on what it is we truly, truly want out of life. Job loss pushes people out of their comfort zones. It forces them to ask themselves hard questions, it might force you to pursue your dreams, go back to school or start that business that you've always wanted to start. This could be that opportunity. If you're finding this video helpful, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. If you're struggling through job loss, leave me a comment. Let me know how I can help you along this journey. My name's Shauna Cole. Thanks so much for watching.